Uh, Galatians chapter 1. Tonight I'll be covering every pastor's name that you probably heard about or maybe watch online. Hopefully you haven't been watching these people. And I'm going to show you from the scripture. It will actually be scriptural. The scriptures will exactly say it. It's not going to be something that is fake or that I'm twisting. No, this video is real. Keep watching. You might be surprised. I'm going to be covering a galore of names. And you've probably been referring to these guys. First of all, in Galatians chapter 1, the title of today is basically Famous Christians, Famous Christians Who Are Perverts. Who Are Perverts. Caught for perversions. Caught for being perverts. And I'm going to show you, it's going to be uh, much more than you think. And it ain't just a Jimmy Swagger thing or a Carl Lentz Hillsong thing or a Ravi Zacharias thing. It's going to be all these other names, so many more names. Yes, it includes some of the names I just mentioned, but it's way more than you thought that you never thought about before. Believe it or not. And I got two big surprises. The biggest surprises are at the end of the video and you might be shocked and surprised. It's a name that you would have never thought before. Let's first at Galatians chapter 1, and then we'll look at verse 7. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 7. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So notice the first mention of pervert here, and that relates to the gospel of of Christ. For some of you who don't know the definition of pervert, it actually means in Webster's 1828 dictionary to turn from the right to corrupt. Another definition from Webster's 1828 dictionary is to turn from truth. Okay, so remember that it's turning from the truth. That means anything that disrupts the truth is a perversion. And people who don't go for the truth are big perverts. Amen. Believe it or not. And by the way, you might not believe this, but in this video, I'm also going to expose some things. I'm going to disclose some private things of Gene Kim, believe it or not. You're going to be shocked. Some of you are going to be shocked. So enemies out there who want to catch me on something, this is it. I'm going to give you all the juicy details right here. <laughs> now let's look at Galatians 1. Some of you are probably wondering, should I be in church tonight? This is making me nervous. It's going to make you more nervous, believe it or not. Okay, watch later on. It's going to make you even more nervous. But first of all, all right, a lot of people are going to be triggered tonight. First of all, let's start off with the easy one which we can agree with. The gospel is important, amen? amen? We believe that the gospel should be clear, the honesty should be given, there should be no errors in the gospel. Why? Because your soul is at stake. A person can burn in hell for eternity if you give the wrong gospel. The Bible says at Galatians 1, 7, that which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. God takes that so seriously that he says at verse 8, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which is we have preached unto you, let him be, what? Accursed. So you are a cursed. God sees you as cursed if uh, you pervert the gospel. Well, I don't want to be a gospel pervert. Uh, what is the gospel? Well, Let's look at right here. It's pretty simple. Look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's get a clear gospel here. Yeah. Look at Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want you to go to Romans chapter 4. I want you to go to Romans 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's see what the gospel is about. Have you ever heard some people talking about, well, when people say 
that to be saved in the gospel, that uh, faith is required, but there's nothing more in addition, such as turning away from your sins. That's what they call repentance. Making sure that you live your life as a good Christian. Then that is actually not true. Really? Well, let's look at the scriptures. Pervert or a truther? Let's see. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Well, what is it? Paul said this should be something basic everyone should know about. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Look at that. It is faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. So, did you believe? See, believe. It never said for you to clean up your act. To quit these sins, it says to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. You might say, why is that all that's required? The reason why, it's so simple. If you think that there's something on your part or something more you have to do, like cleaning up your sins, you got to quit this and that, start reading your Bible, go to church, have the Holy Spirit convict you first in all these things, and you have to read, and then we see the fruit of that from what? Reading your Bible, and then going to church, and stopping these sins. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If, all, if you have to do these things, why did Jesus even bother dying for you? See? Why did Jesus even have to die if what you're doing on those things count? He died for nothing. Do you believe he died for all of our sins? Yes, sir. It says in verse 3, died for our sins. Is that all sins? Yep. Okay, then he died for all our sins. You, he paid the price for all our sins. Yep. He cleansed away all our sins. Unless you want to do something about your sin and you think that you're in the position of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's, right. That's serious. So look at Romans chapter 4. And verse 4, Romans chapter 4, verse 4. Well, I don't think that's enough. Ray Comfort actually uh, gives the whole gospel, shows that they're a sinner and they need to repent. But then when it comes to the point where they're about to do the sinner's prayer, he, does, he stops them cold, where a person can be able to say it to God. I'm not saying that praying saves you, no. But what I'm saying right here is that a person is about to tell God, I believe that your death, burial, and resurrection saved me. I only trust in that. When the person is about to say that, Ray Comfort doesn't do that with them because he feels like, you know, that's not genuine then, the sinner's prayer. You know, I'm kind of leading them along or that person's heart is not sincere. Why? Because of their sinful condition. They won't quit their fornication first. They won't stop these sins. Uh, you notice whenever he witnesses to them, at the end, what does he close with? Not telling them to, okay, let's tell God right now, let's get you saved right now. I trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. No, he doesn't do that with them. He tells them, go home, read your Bible. Quit this sin and that sin. And people online accuse me for saying, you, uh, no, Ray Comfort doesn't uh, teach a wrong gospel. You're being too nitpicky. Look at his witnessing style. It's so obvious. It's so obvious. Well, pastor, what you're saying is too simplistic. If you are genuinely saved in Jesus Christ, like John MacArthur and Paul Washer, and actually Ray Comfort would agree with these guys, believe it or not, if you doubt me, then just bring up these names. John MacArthur said this. Paul Washer said this. Do you agree with that, Ray Comfort? Then look how he answers your question. Don't accuse me for being quick to accuse. You're the quick accuser. Yeah. Go contact Ray Comfort and ask him. He's not going to go against those guys. You know why? Because he agrees alongside them. That if, you, that if you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, truly saved by faith, 
that works should show out of your life that, see, you got to clean these sins or there's some fruits of the Holy Spirit that have to come out. You know, that kind of stuff. Look at Romans chapter four, Romans chapter four. And then we'll look at verse four and five, verse four and five. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. What about that? So a person is saved by faith, but then he's like, okay, what are the fruits out of my life? Am I, my work showing out of my life? Then when you're doing that, then it's not of grace, but of death. You're not saved by grace. Verse five, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. So if I tell that person, you don't work at all. Yeah. I'm not telling you to stop fornication, stop smoking, stop gambling, stop sinning. All you have to do is just trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Hey, yeah, if I say that, that's not heresy. That's the gospel. Yeah. To say the opposite is the wrong gospel. Yeah. Though I don't believe you. Read that verse. Okay. But to him that worketh not, see, works don't show out of his life, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? Righteousness. Righteousness. You are automatically saved. Woo! You are automatically saved. Okay. So, who's the pervert then? So, sorry, but these are the perverts then. So, we got J. Mac. Okay, so John MacArthur. So, he's a pervert. Paul Washer is the biggest pervert. He's probably harder than all these preachers on this doctrine that we ought to see works out of your life. Genuine repentance, real repentance. You know, when they keep saying that, what is real repentance? Up to what point? Don't get me wrong, I believe a sinner has to repent, but not to these imbeciles that talk about real repentance and then they think that there's some kind of level, some kind of thing that they have to see, but you know, you don't, you're not drawing the line up to what level. Then you're the final authority to tell them this, we need, I need to see this particular amount to genuinely see that you're saved. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? I would like to ask this. What about your thought life, huh? What about pastors who struggle with their thought life? What about pastors who fell into uh, acts of fornication but, act but, uh, but did so much good work for the Lord? What about pastors who've been caught cheating? What about uh, money scandals? Are they lost, these pastors? What about Christians who struggle with sin? They might be convicted over their sin, but they fall back to the habit. And not only that, sometimes they can even become worse after that. Yeah. So then you're going to judge them lost? Up to what level? You see what I mean? That's why I don't believe this real repentance stuff. No, the gospel is simple. Simple repentance, right. simple faith. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Look, these are fruit inspectors. They're inspecting. They're looking at your fruit, your works. You better watch out for these guys. J. Mac, Paul Washer, you ever watch The Wretched Channel? Don't watch it. Todd Friel. Don't watch Apollo Gia Studios, all right? He's a heretic. He teaches that kind of stuff. Don't watch these Calvinists that teach this stuff. Watch out for Calvinists. They're really big on this one. And yes, Ray Comfort is a pervert. He shows off his perversion on the streets all the time. Now, I know that I'm getting a bunch of heat, okay? But look at the scriptures. Please don't be mad at me. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. Please look at the Bible. And then what did the Bible call them? Perverts. Amen. You have an issue, look at the verse, please. Now, here's another one. We're going to look at Jeremiah, please. Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. Guess what? It's just going to get worse. It's going to get worse what I'm going to show you. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, and those of you who are watching us online, are you caught in this kind of trap? Are you a pervert? Look at Jeremiah chapter 23. That's why all these big names are just caught into that mess. They're all just caught into that mess. Look at the book of Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 36. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 36. If you are not King James only, if you don't believe the King James Bible is perfect and pure, you are a pervert. That's right. What you're going to get out of this church is that it's going to be an uncomfortable road if you don't believe in right doctrine, right stance like we do. 
You want to find a different church that suits your beliefs then. But in our church, we believe in right doctrine and the right word of God. Amen. Now, before you get mad at me, let's look at the Bible. Don't look at me like a tree full of owls. Don't go by feelings. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible, okay? And hey, uh, like I pointed out, you're going to see Gene Kim perversion real soon. So don't get upset at me. I'm going to expose myself real soon. I'm going to tell you private stuff that people are going to go, what? You know, I can't believe this. And then I'm going to show you scripture. But let's look at Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 36. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden, for ye have what? Perverted, Perverted the words of the living God. Whoa! Lo, look at right there. So the verse says that you are, there are perverts out there. And remember, what does pervert mean? Don't get mad at me. I'm even reading from a dictionary to you. It means that's away from the truth. It errs. But let's look at scripture, okay? What does it mean that the word of God is corrupted, perverted? Look at Revelation 22. Let's make this very easy and very simple. Let's make it very easy, very simple. Forget King James only, okay? I'm not going to even say King James only, okay? If you think the King James Bible has errors, then you know what you have? A perverted Bible. That's right. If the NIV is the one that has the wrong words, that's a perverted Bible. Yeah. Look, just have the guts that there is such a thing as perverted Bibles. If you don't have the guts to say perverted words of God, then you got to look at Jeremiah 23. There is such a thing as perverted words of God. And what does that mean? That doesn't mean God's the one that's perverting his words. Somebody is perverting his words. Do you believe that exists? Yes, sir. If you don't believe in that, you got to check your heart. That's why we become King James only. When you keep thinking that all these Bible have mistakes and errors, including the King James Bible, there's something wrong right there. That will contradict Scripture. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to be a pervert like him. Look at Revelation 22. So let's look at the Bible. Let's forget King James only. Let's go step by step so we can find out the fact, okay? Let's look at Revelation 22. Let's see what God considers it. Revelation 22. And verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall what? Add, add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. See, it's adding words. And if any man shall take away from the what? Words, words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, what does that verse say? And don't look at me like a tree full of owls. Look at the Bible. Amen. That way you can see the truth. All right, if you don't look at the Bible, you're not going to believe what I'm going to say right now. So look at it. See how my ex explanation matches it. Okay? Is it true so far, 18 and 19, God does not... Let's make it simple. Can we agree God does not want you to add to his words or subtract from it? Amen. Yes, we can at least agree that much, okay? I'm not telling you to be King James only. At least agree with me that much. Yeah. If you don't want to agree with me, then you, you're not listening, all right? Or you don't want the truth. Right. At least follow along with me. Do you agree that much? Look at the verse yeah. and agree with me right there because anyone and any scholar out there would agree with me. Yeah. Yes, all Christians would agree with that. Now, what does that mean, though? That's where we all disagree with, right? Okay, what does it mean when you add or subtract words? It should be simple. One is called common sense. You add or subtract words from the Bible. If you look at all these different Bibles, they add words or they subtract. It's that simple. But, uh, you know, people don't want to believe that. They want to say, well, because when you're translating words, it's going to be obvious you're going to add some stuff. But, you know, you're not really taking away the words or the meaning. You know, I hear all that, okay? So let's make this simple. Okay, let's make this very, very simple. One is, the verse says right here, meanings or words at verse 18 and 19. Words, words right? Yeah. It's words. One 
is words. Secondly, even if we fall for that trap of meanings, okay, well, you know, when you translate words, it's the meanings that are the same. No, they don't mean the same. Look at these Bibles, they don't mean the same. If you don't believe me, I've done teaching in classes where everyone had different Bibles, and they're not King James only, okay? I had people read verses, and some of the people in the class went, no, that's not what the verse says. They've been so confused. You, know, you want some examples? Well, keep your hand here, and then let's look at a few examples, okay? I want you to go to the book of Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Let's look at one verse. I'm not going to show you so many, but I'm gonna, just going to show you one verse. That's it. If you want more information on this, watch Should I Only Use the King James Bible? Or you can go to our playlist in our channel. It's called Defending the KJV. Click on that one, and then the first few vid videos should show you, okay? But let's look at Mark chapter 1, and then we'll read Mark chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says, as it is written in the prophets... All right, what did the King James Bible say? Did it say Isaiah or prophets? Prophets, prophets. okay. Why is it more than one prophet? Because they're quoting scripture. As it is written in the prophets, who are they? Malachi, that's chapter 3, verse 1. Look at, uh, look, continue reading Mark 1, 2. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. That's Malachi 3, 1. Okay, then verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That's Isaiah. So that is the book of Isaiah. So notice that Isaiah is quoted in verse 3, and then uh, verse 2, Malachi 3, 1 is quoted. But you know what the modern Bible versions say? They say in Ma Mark 1, 2, as it is written in Isaiah. No, that is wrong. That is wrong. Isaiah did not say verse 2, unless you want to lie. Unless you want to lie. You know why you don't want to accept that? There's something stubborn in your heart. That's the thing. Why not just accept the truth that there's something plainly different, something plainly contradicting? Listen, Jesus does not equal Satan, and one does not equal two. There's a difference. But because you refuse to see the difference with prophets and Isaiah... We live in a day and age where liberals are saying, you know, uh, you can, math is not hardcore where one can equal two when we look at a different painting and spectrum with this gender identity. They actually teach that. Why do Christian churches fall for that? You want to follow that trap? Of not seeing plainly contradictions and admitting the clear difference and pretending and tolerating all differences are the same? There's not much, yeah, same spirit as the liberals do. That's the same spirit as the liberals do. Look at Revelation chapter 22. Okay, go back to Revelation 22. So, it's words then. Okay, then is the King James Bible guilty? Well, let's do this, okay? First of all, can we agree that there is a perfect Bible, okay? So, there has to be a perfect Bible. Some people might say, well, only the originals is the perfect Bible, not the King James. If you go that far, then that means that every other Bible here that added words or subtracted words or had mistakes from the originals, they're perverts. Right. And you shouldn't have a Bible. It's that simple. If God can preserve your soul, He can't preserve His Word. If God can raise a life from the dead, He can't put life into this book. That's something I don't understand. Now, think about this. So then, there's a perfect Bible. That's the bottom line, okay? If people still have difficulty believing what I'm about to say, then let's make this simple. Well, well no, I don't. I think that in this passage right here, it's talking about only the book of Revelation. That's what they'll say, okay, at Revelation 22. It's not talking about adding or subtracting words from the Bible. It's just the book of Revelation. Well, that's very simple then, okay? Didn't you know if you look at the book of Revelation in all the different Bibles, 
They have words that subtract or add then. See, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference whether you say book of Revelation or Bible. Okay, let's take the book of Revelation then. Don't add words or subtract words from there. So, see, we have to say, what's the perfect Bible? We have to demand that. And any or perfect book of Revelation, I don't care. Say that. But any other book out there that has words that add or subtract from it, then those are perverts. They're condemned strongly by God. If you don't condemn it that strongly, God condemns it strongly. If you condemn strongly what I'm teaching to you on this one, man, you better be scared. God's condemning you strongly right here at 1819. I'd be scared to death if I were you. But when we look at verse 18 and 19, some people will say, well, uh, when it's talking about uh, the words uh, to this book of Revelation, that's just talking about like the Quran or the Book of Mormon or the Jehovah Witness Bible. Those are the ones that, uh, that have the wrong Bibles out there. But pretty much all Christian Bibles are the same uh, but those Bibles out there are wrong, so that's what the Bible is condemning. No, he's not condemning books. He's condemning words in his book. His book. His Bible. Words in his Bible. So that means God's saying there are fake Bibles out there. That's right. Cuckoo. Look at this verse. Verse 18. If any man shall add unto, uh, uh, verse 18, excuse me, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of what? This book. Simple. Okay, let me, let's, let me ask you a simple question. Quran definitely don't qualify for that, or Book of Mormon. It's not about words in his Bible. Which books qualify for that today? You know what the problem with people who don't want to believe in a perfect Bible today? They don't think about verse 18 and 19. Then what, what, what is he talking about right here? The wrong words that are added, subtracted to the book. Tell me. That's why, you know what fits the best in this? The wrong Bibles today. Yes, it's that simple. Yes, why do you have to be so complicated? All right, but why the King James Bible? So I want to encourage people that if you look at our playlist on defending the KJV, that's why we choose the King James Bible. It is undoubtedly the best candidate, too much manuscript evidence, and even ancient witnesses supporting it. There's just way, way too much evidence for this one. So you can watch that one if you want to get technical. Okay, anyways, the next one, let's go to... Acts 13, Acts 13, Acts chapter 13. Now, just because you might believe the King James Bible is perfect, and just because you get the gospel right, doesn't mean that you're free from perversion. Some people might accuse me, Gene Kim, why does he call out these preachers who teach, you know, some doctrines different from him? It's not a big deal. No, it should be a big deal. All right, because if you don't believe me, the next one is doctrine. Doctrine. Do you want to, uh, let's make this easy, okay? Uh, do you want true doctrine or wrong doctrine? True. All right, then. Uh, I mean, uh, is no, uh, are you okay with having a little bit of wrong doctrine or do you really want all true? A little bit of perversion or all true? All right, it's that simple. Now, am I professing myself to be a perfect pastor? No. Am I saying there are perfect pastors out there? No. A lot of us uh, have problems ourselves. But the point is right here is you want to find the best group who's the closest to give you as much perfect truth as possible. That's why a lot of times I'll just say theory or I could be wrong, right? So it's best to always say that when you get to deeper, deeper doctrines. But when you start to give wrong doctrine, you should be scared. You should be scared. And if you don't think that's a big deal, then look at Acts 13. Acts 13. <coughs> Notice what Paul was doing. You'll look at verse 5, Acts 13, 5. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. Okay, he's preaching, right? 
But notice someone's trying to uh, withhold him. Verse 8, but Elemis the sorcerer. See that? So he's trying to stop them from preaching the word of God. Now look what Paul said about him, verse 10, and said, O fool of all subtility and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. So that's pretty extreme, right? That don't mean, oh, I can tolerate you. No, this is really condemned, right? Enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to what? Pervert the right ways of the Lord. All right, so this person is perverting. He's a pervert, right? Perverting what? Perverting what? Let's look at what Paul preached, okay? We're going to look at verse 12, verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the what? Doctrine of the Lord. Wow, simple. Wow, God strongly condemns it. He calls you a pervert. All right, you want right doctrine? Very simple. Let's find out how we can get right doctrine. All right, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, and then 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2 and 2 Timothy 3. You want right doctrine? Very simple. One, that's why you got to look at the Word of God, the Bible. So, how many current event sources are people pulling up for you that you believe them more? Or scholastic sources, or Greek and Hebrew words? Or are you looking at the Bible? Better yet, how many of the, these people you've been watching who's been quoting a wrong Bible? If this is true, there's pervert Bibles out there, and those preachers are supporting their doctrines through pervert Bibles. And if you don't believe me, look how they concentrate on certain words in the verses to support their doctrine. Look, I've been to countless higher ed stuff and l viewed a lot of debates and stuff like that, talked to so many people, if you don't believe in words make a big deal, they do in debates, in apologetics. They use verses to support their point to teach a doctrine. So I wonder why they don't believe in the doctrine like uh, this church does then. Makes you wonder if they have a wrong Bible. That's got to that's gotta be eye-opening. Oh, I don't believe in that. You don't read Bible. Look at 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture... See that? See the Bible? All of it is given. Not some. If you say that only uh, most of them are correct, but some are incorrect, no, the Bible says all. See, we make a big deal about a perfect Bible. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine. That's where you get right doctrine from. Oh, okay. Then look at 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, then how, how do we do this? How do we deal with the Bible? 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly what? Dividing, Dividing the word of truth. You need to divide the word. Divide the word. That's called dispensationalism. For some of you who didn't know about that, uh, just go to our channel again. I'm not going to go through all the dispensational teachings, but simply go to our YouTube channel, look at our playlist section, you'll find dispensationalism. And just watch the first few videos, or even all of them if you want. And basically dispensationalism, that is the core of finding truth. Yeah. No, I don't believe that. Verse 15 says word of truth. Dividing is necessary. You need to divide the verses. You need to divide the verses where it can go to a, the right group of people and the right time period. Why? Because not all verses apply to you. For example, uh, the, there's a verse that says, if you take God's name in vain, you should be stoned to death. Obviously, we don't do that. There's a verse that says you need to sacrifice lambs for the forgiveness of sins. Obviously, we don't do that because we got Jesus Christ sacrifice as our forgiveness of sins. Uh, there's verses where it says, don't wear mixed fabric. Well, obviously, uh, it's an abomination. Well, obviously, that don't apply to us. There's an Old Testament verse that says, 
that you should let your hair grow long. And then the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11, that says it's a shame if you let your hair grow long. See that? The verses have to be divided to the right group of people, right time period. Is it talking to a Jew? Is it talking to a Gentile? Is it talking during the Old Testament? During the church age? Or during the tribulation? Future end times? Or millennium? Watch the playlist and then you will see. Dispensationalism basics of it is a pre-tribulation rapture. So if you don't believe in that, then you are a pervert in doctrine. Hey, I'm not saying you're a gospel pervert. Don't get upset at me. I don't think you're a really bad pervert. I think that you're a halfway pervert. See, people don't like that, but the Bible says you are a pervert. You're a nice pervert. You're a nice pervert. But a pervert is still a pervert. A guy who does, you know, I didn't commit the heavy crime as rape and murder. I was just doing a little voyeur stuff. Guess what both of them are? Perverts. That's why people get offended at me. They think they, they, they label all these things at once. No, they're all the same label, but they have different levels. It's that simple. Why do you get upset at me? Why can't you just look at the verse? If you think that I'm wrong on this one, then just look at our playlist. We have a playlist. Uh, called uh, uh, Mid-Post-Tribulation Rapture. Just watch that playlist. It'll give you so much material. Another one is we believe the restoration of the nation of Israel. That verses, in the New Test uh, that verses in the Old Testament belong to, old, uh, to the nation of Israel, not the Christian church. People who are like... Uh, very much against Zionism and against the modern-day nation of Israel, calling them Rothschilds and evil people. Hey, I don't deny the evil behind it. Judas Iscariot was a Jew as well. But these are the same people who would say, these are fake Jews while the Christians are the real Jews. No, that's a heresy. Basic dispensationalism teaches that Israel is still Israel, and then Christian is still the church, and God is using both programs. But uh, you just look at our playlist, just look at our playlist, and then uh, it can show you. Just look at our playlist about the Jews. You'll find a playlist that, I forgot what it's titled, but it says like Jews, okay? So if you look up that playlist, it'll give a lot of explanations on that one. Either you're a pervert or I'm a pervert. It's that simple. Okay, that's true. I'm a pervert or you're a pervert. Just have the guts to do it and pr stop pretending like a liberal. They're all the same thing. Why can't we all get along? Yeah. Why don't you look at the scripture and mark, draw the line? Do you have the guts to draw the line? Do you have the guts to call it out? Okay, here's another one. But before I go to these other ones, then look at this. This is shocking. Now, this might make you mad, but let's be honest then. Then who are the ones using different modern Bible versions then? If this statement is true, that the King James Bible is a perfect Bible and all other Bibles are wrong. If that statement is true, then people who's using modern Bible versions are perverts. Who are they? Oh, John MacArthur again. Oh, Ray Comfort with New King James Version. Yes, they're different. Just watch the playlist again I told you about defending KJV. Ray Comfort's a pervert. Charles Stanley, Baptist preacher, he's got some good stuff, but sorry, he perverts himself by using wrong Bible versions at times. Sorry. Uh, you're, see, I'm going to be very unpopular, but this is very true. You got Charles Stanley. You got uh, Joel Osteen, pervert. Benny Hinn, pervert. T.D. Jakes, at least he's using the King James Bible. <laughs> but then he, I wonder if he believes all the right doctrines of dispensationalism like we do. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this one. In dispensationalism right doctrine, you also believe in different salvations. Believe it or not. Old Testament salvation is different from New Testament salvation. Why? You receive forgiveness of sins in the Old Testament by sacrificing a lamb. In the New Testament Christian church age, 
you receive forgiveness of sins by putting your faith alone in Jesus Christ for salvation. Yeah. It's that simple. The, Jesus did not even die on the cross yet. So then how can they receive that, believe in that? Remember the gospel? You have to believe in that for your salvation. How can the Old Testament uh, do that if he didn't even die yet to wash away their sins? See, it doesn't make sense. You ever wondered why James 2 ever mentioned Abraham had faith and works? Did you ever wonder why they have to have the law of Moses that had a lot of works? And did you ever wonder why today, Seventh-day Adventists, Messianic Jews, and uh, uh, Hebrew Roots Movement or all these people, they're trying to get Christians to follow Old Testament. And they even, some of them even put that as part of your salvation because they don't divide those salvation timelines. It's that simple. All right, again, watch the playlist, Dispensationalism. It'll show you all of that. It'll be eye-opening. Don't get mad at me. Study. Go home and study, okay? Guess what? You even have my permission to get mad at me and accuse me but not, not before you study first. Yeah. You have no right to do that without studying, without giving me a chance. You don't give me a chance. You just find whatever you can online to, to, that has dirt on me yeah. or your feelings or your own thoughts to find dirt on me. You're not even giving me a chance. Wow, look at the scriptures. At least give me a chance when I'm showing you the scriptures. Look at that first. Then you have my permission to accuse me, get upset at me. So then you got uh, Joyce Meyer with her own Bible. You got, wait a minute, this is a shock. Pretty much, maybe nearly all Christian churches you thought about. What channels are you watching, huh? You know, uh, gotquestions.org, the, those guys, they don't believe in uh, one perfect Bible. They don't believe in that. They don't believe in dispensational salvations like we do. Look at uh, the channels you're watching. Simply ask them if they believe in dispensational salvation and if they believe the King James Bible is perfect in every word and if they believe in this gospel. Do those three questions, you'd be shocked. I think maybe 100% of the channels you're watching could be perverts. And you're a pervert for watching it and desiring it, That's wanting to see it more, having it in your heart to think about it and believe it. That's a dirty thought. That's a perverted thought. All right. So we see these cases about doctrine, but, it, oh, doctrine's not a big deal. Really? Look at 2 Timothy 1. Let me surprise you. Go to 2 Timothy 1. 2 Timothy 1. And then Romans 16. 2 Timothy 1 and Romans 16. I didn't even come to the big parts yet, so let me do this very quickly. This is, uh, this is longer than I thought. I'll make this as quick as I can, okay? Look at 2 Timothy 1. Notice what the Bible says when he compares uh, people where they have uh, some issues uh, with doctrine. We're going to look at the book of, I think it's 1 Timothy 1, excuse me. I'm going everything by memory. Yes, it's 1 Timothy 1. I'm, I'm sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Look at verse 10, verse 10. For whoremongers, is that bad? Yeah. Yeah, is that a pervert? Yeah. yeah, that's a pervert. For them that defile themselves, that's pervert. With mankind, that's pervert. For men stealers, that's wicked. For liars, that's wicked. For perjured persons, that's wicked. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now, don't get mad at me. That verse says anything that contradicts sound doctrine right there is in line with those perverts wow. and wicked sinners. There's something wrong with your heart. If, uh, why, you know why? I know why it's too extreme for you. You're so used to a day and age of toleration. Toleration. You don't think the devil has his own Christians. Only liberals. Why don't you think and pray about that for a while? Okay, Romans 16. Romans 16. You know what that verse says? I'm not extreme. Look at Romans 16. It demands us to separate separate from those people who teach wrong doctrine. 
Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and what? Avoid, avoid them. That's a big issue. See, God wants you to avoid it. Okay, let's uh, go to some surprising passages. Exodus 20. Let's go to Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23. Let's look at Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23, and then the next one is the book of uh, Job. We're going to look at the book of Job 33. Job 33 and Exodus 23. Exodus 23 and Job 23. All right. Here it is, the big thing you're waiting for. Mark it down, you enemies out there, you trolls. All right. Why am I a pervert? Well, uh, I'm going to expose myself here. That way the enemies out there don't feel as guilty. Okay, I'm going to include myself along with that. All right, let's look at uh, Exodus 23 and Job 33. Uh, I'll tell you why that uh, I'm a pervert. Believe it or not, I'm guilty of this. Look at Job 33, 27. Job 33, 27. I am guilty of this. Job 33, 27. He that... Look at the pawn men. Uh, he looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. You know why I'm a pervert? You know why Gene Kim's a pervert? Sometimes I take the right things. Sometimes I know what's right for the Lord, but I mess it up. I mess it up. You caught me. I'm a pervert. You know what the biggest surprise is? The person gave the answer. You're the pervert. If you committed the sin, you're a pervert just like them. No, I'm not a pervert. How dare you? You're so mean. No, no, you're a pervert too. Why? I, but, uh, you know, the gospel perverts are just as bad. Ah, different levels. You see this? It gets dark and then lighter, and then you get to something more pure truth. It comes in levels. The devil don't do uh, in different, uh, like, uh, strict lines you know how he does the levels in back and forth in abstract ways like this in a fluid way why so that you can't see those lines marked that's how he does it you know uh, who's a pervert you are you might say why you pervert the right ways of God all right look at Exodus 23 Exodus 23 you know, when I teach you from the Bible and teach you what is truth and help people find Bible-believing churches, and some people have the audacity where we can't support each other as Bible believers, if, you're in the, if you found your right team of Bible believers, look, I'm, I'm for calling out enemies, but if you found your right team of Bible believers, you should stick there, and then, yeah, everyone is imperfect in church, even your own church, even your own life. So learn to get along and stop being a jerk, and then calling them out as enemies. Yeah. If you found your right team of Bible believers, I mean, if they got the gospel right, if they got their doctrine right, and then if they got, uh, you know, the, if they got a perfect book, and they're trying to live the right way for the Lord, and guess what? If, they're all, if we're trying the best that we could to be perfect, you know, you might as well tolerate it and get along with that one. So see... I'm all for toleration. You thought I'm a jerk. Look, I'm all for toleration, but the problem is you're not picking your teams. You just think all these different teams were all the same bunch. That's right. You got to find the right, the most perfect team first. Why? Because God uses a church. A church is a team. Yeah. A church is what? A called out group, assembly, team of people. You need to find that. That's what I'm talking about right here. Okay. And then these people out there, they just post in channels, Gene Kim exposed and Gene Kim this and that and that. You know, you better watch out for that one. You know what God says about you guys? Exodus chapter 23, you're a pervert. Why are you so perverted to find anything out there about me? To look for anything juicy out there about me? Say that I say something juicy, controversial. You're a pervert. You got a perverted mind. Exodus 23 verse 8. And thou shalt take no gift 
For the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the what? Words of the righteous. If the Lord is using me to teach you something righteous and I'm a righteous preacher, I'm not saying I am, but if I am one of those people, then you better be careful with how you're finding those words in that preacher and then twisting it. God's called preacher, if you better be careful of that one. Here's another one. Let's look at Proverbs. Proverbs 10 and Proverbs 19. Proverbs 10, Proverbs 19. How many of you are getting a blessing tonight? Amen. Yeah, you know why? Because you want to fix your perverted ways. Yeah, right. We're not sensitive like these people. Oh, are you calling me a pervert? You're calling me a pervert. No, no, we believe that we have perverted errors ourselves. Yeah. Let's look at Proverbs 10 and Proverbs 19. Proverbs 10 and Proverbs 19. Let's start with Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 9. 9. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. See that? So have you uh, perverted your walk with the Lord? How's your Christian walk right now? Have you been perverting it? How's your Christian walk? Look at Proverbs 19, verse 3. Your hand's there, so I'll read it. 19, 3. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Look at that. If you don't follow God's plan and go by your own way because you're fe fearful and worried, you know what God calls you? A pervert. How many of you prefer and lean toward your own ways, not God ways, because of worry and fear? Huh? Because of fretting. You're a pervert. That's a perverted mind. Look at the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. Watch out when you find it appealing when people talk like Ravi Zacharias. It's so intellectual. People go for these uh, creationists who debate so well against evolution. William Lane Craig, who can argue philosophically. John MacArthur, the way he talks, because he graduated from seminary. These uh, professors know Greek and Hebrew. They got doctorates. Watch out for that. Those are perverts. The only reason why I would uh, put off my credentials is it's so sad. You guys wouldn't listen to me unless I put a degree in over there. And that's what might catch your attention. You might go, he might have some weight to what he said. Why on my wisdom? Why not the word of God? Anybody can teach the word of God out there without a diploma, without an education. It's so sad. Look at Isaiah 47, verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeketh me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath what? Perverted, Perverted thee. Shame on you. All right. Now, uh, we're going to look at Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. And verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 3. And then we'll look at verse 21. Again, your wisdom. How many times did you go by your own wisdom? You got a little pride there, huh? Hey, some of you preachers and teachers of that book, sometimes you get that little pride in you because of how smart or what you were able to discover. And some people get into rebel mode and then they cause problem for their own Bible-believing pastor. I'm not talking about a false pastor, but rather a Bible-believing pastor because they think they're smarter on something and that's a pervert. And pastors, including Bible-believing pastors who use their wi wisdom and intellect to abuse members, to control them, you're a pervert. You're going by your wisdom, huh? That's a lot of pride you have. You should be scared about that. I'm from independent fundamental Baptist churches, and they're sadly one of the people that's really guilty of controlling and abuse and manipulation. That's why I'm not just independent fundamental Baptist. I'm a Bible believer. Amen. And I don't stick around that IFB crowd as much. Stream was cut, they said. Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 21. The Bible says, 
a voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. Why? And they have forgotten the what? Lord their God. They forgot something from God. Oh, um, didn't you get a good preaching, a good counseling, a good advice that helped you? Then uh, why did you forget that and repeat your same cycle again? Whoa, talk about altar call, right? You're a pervert. You're a pervert. I won't uh, pound on that one. I won't park there. I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about. That's already convicting enough, right? That's convicting enough. So these are the verses that we all looked at and discovered together that this world is filled with perversion. And that's why you need to clean yourself with that book. The Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. I want to challenge all of you to do that today. Whether I'm right or wrong, before you make that conclusion, I want to challenge you to get to that book. I bet you some of these, most of these people who accuse me, most of these people have not read through the Bible even once. Wow. Yep. That is perverted. That's disturbing. Yeah. Did you read your Bible before? Through all the way? At least once. And then you think that you know much about that book, huh? No, you've been watching too much stuff online. Yes, you've been listening to too much wisdom of men, huh? Mm -hmm. Including in the seminaries or higher ed school. I hope this video will be spread around and that it will help so many people out there. All right, get out of the perverted errors. God, my Father, I pray that tonight's teaching has been an incredible blessing to the hearers and make all of us seek for truth and then ask questions and find answers and, not to, and to be critical of ourselves rather than to be critical of others, to be critical of our own viewpoints and to find what is real and what is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.